All right, you're nearly there. Just one more hurdle and your page will be ready to go. I see a lot of people neglect their about section. I know not many people visit the about section of a Facebook page, but that's not the point. We want the robots to be able to find your page. What I mean by that is I want the computer algorithms on Facebook and Google to be able to find your page when somebody does a search. Facebook has its own search engine embedded within the platform, and the goal is to show up first when somebody does a search for your business. To do that, you'll need to work on your SEO, or search engine optimization. When somebody does a search on Facebook, it takes into account factors like the name of your business, the categories that your page has selected, the topics, the location, your recent posts, and the general quality of your posts. The more information you give search engines, the more likely you are to show up in a search, which is why it is so important to fill out your About section. Let's dive in. All right, I'm logged into my Facebook profile, and I'm going to show you how to navigate back to your page. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the little blue carrot. Click here, and a drop-down menu will show you the different pages you manage. Once your page has loaded, to navigate to the About section, simply click on the About tab. Facebook is transitioning from an old system to a new system, and thankfully I find the new system a lot easier. The old way was that you could go through each of these, edit them, save it, and wait for the page to reload. The new system, on the other hand, lets you do much more information all at once. So, up here, click on the Edit Page Info, and it'll allow you to edit multiple categories at once. Let's start with subcategories. I recommend doing a little research on your competition, just like we did for the categories, at the beginning of this course. If you have a niche that's very specific, I recommend trying to enter in that as your subcategory. Otherwise, play around and see what works. So for example, for a makeup page, a subcategory could be makeup. So let's try it. You'll be able to see in a drop-down menu the different options that it wants to autofill. Makeup artists wouldn't be a great option for a makeup store, so I would delete it and try again. So let's try cosmetics. All right, so I can see cosmetics and beauty supply. That would be a great category for my business, so I'll select it. You can have up to three subcategories, so think about which categories would be most relevant to you. Once you're ready, click Save Changes and move on to the next section. Earlier on in the course, we wrote a short description. Now, it wants a full description. This can be several paragraphs long, and I recommend adding information about your business that would help people want to buy. If you have a website, I've seen a lot of people copy their About section from the website to their Facebook page, and that seems to work well. For the purpose of time, I'm not going to do a full description here, but please, please don't do what I do. <laughs> Write a full description and put it in this description box. Be sure to add your website here. If you have an email address that customers can contact you at, enter it here. I find that a lot of customers find this very helpful, so if you're wondering how relevant it'll be, I do recommend putting your email address in. I don't tend to get much spam on my accounts, but if that's a concern of yours, you can always um, have them message you through the Facebook platform. And of course, do as I say, not as I do. Street address. So if your business is all done online, 
I recommend removing this check mark. If your business is reliant on foot traffic, or if you service customers in a certain zone, enter in your address here. Hours. So this category isn't a set and forget. I see a lot of businesses set hours and then they have different holiday hours and it can cause a lot of frustration to your customers. So after you've added your hours in, be sure to come back anytime you change them. It's quick and easy and you can even have it so that your website will automatically populate your Facebook page if you do it correctly. So, so if you don't have set hours, I recommend setting always open, especially if you're an online business. Now that we've finished the most important options, let's go through some of the other details. I'm going to refresh my page and see which sections are remaining. On top of categories and subcategories, you also have topics. So you can choose three words that are relevant to your business to describe your page. These topics are different things that people have put as interests on their Facebook profiles, so they can be a great way to target your audience. You can have up to three topics, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to stick with one. All right, start date. I like to put in a start date or a launch date, started date, opened, especially if your business has been open a lot longer than the Facebook page. So for example, if my business has been around for 25 years, but I'm just launching my page right now, I can go ahead and add in the year right here. I can even add the month and the day if there's a special date. And I accidentally left it as unspecified and it auto-populated found it. So check which one is most appropriate for you. So let's say launched. Impressium. This is legal information that you'll need if you're going to market abroad. For the most part, you can leave this part blank in the United States, but if you're ever worried about it, I recommend filling out this information. Long description. So if I had filled it out in the last page, it would have been here, but because I left it blank, it's prompting me to add my long description again. So I'm just going to add some of the transcript from the video and add it here as dummy text. Mission. If you have a mission, put it in here. I like seeing company missions, so if you've got one, flaunt it. Founding date. If you have a separate start date, from your founding date, be sure to put both of these on. If your business has any awards, this is a great place to put them. All right. I do recommend entering in your products or services if you can on social media. If you have hundreds, I recommend doing general categories and then referring people to the website. When you enter in your products and services, there's a special tab that'll open up for you. And then your customers can go straight from your Facebook page to your products. Um, as far as official page, this would be if you were doing a celebrity fan page or something, you would want to point the official celebrity that your page was about. So if you're the unofficial fan page, 
enter that in. Otherwise, for all other businesses, ignore that. You can edit your Facebook ID, but this number can come in handy sometimes, so it's good to know that it's here. All right, now that I've finished all of the page information, let's go back to our page and see how it looks. All right, now that you've finished setting up your page, you're ready to start posting and inviting people to like your page. Good luck. Congratulations. You're now ready to start marketing your business on Facebook. If you've found these lessons useful, I recommend checking out my Facebook Marketing for Small Businesses course. In it, you'll learn how to reach your audience on Facebook, how to save time by using a social media scheduler, you'll learn different campaigns you can use to bring in new customers, and how to use Facebook advertising. All right. Thank you so much for taking this course, and good luck with your business.